All right, guys, I'm getting ready to start on these, building these nuts here. I've got three of these to make, and it's all metric. I don't have any hex stock close to this. It needs to be, it needs to be this size. So what I've done, is I found a piece of two inch, and, I, and I, found, I figured out what this was. I made a cut across it, you know, and it's putting off those nice uh, purple bluish chips. This is that piece of ETD 150 that I bought last year and did that truck spindle. So this is a drop piece, it'll work good. So um, what I'm gonna do is drill it and tap it using that M16 tap, and then I will turn the OD so that it'll be the diameter of the points there. And then after that, I'm gonna take it out, go to the mill, we're gonna machine the flats on it using the super spacer. And once I do that, I've gotta put some set screws in it uh, as per request. And then I'll come back to the lathe and I'll part them off, okay? So that's what the plan is. I'm not going to talk you through the whole job, everything I'm doing step for step, but I'm going to give you some highlights of the machine work, all right? Okay, tap drill should be 15 millimeter because we're doing a it's a 16 by 1.0, so it uh, should be a 15. Uh, I don't have a 15. The sets that I got are only go up to 13, so I'm using a 19, 30 seconds, I believe, 590. 19, 30 seconds drill bit, which is like 593 on diameter. And of course, this isn't one of my new ones either. That's just one of the used ones that I already had that I put in there. Each side of the, I'm sorry, each nut is going to have a chamfer or a slight countersink on, on one side. Okay. I'm just going to use this countersink tool. All right, getting ready to tap the hole, and uh, so here's the tap. Uh, I made sure that I over lubed it with the uh, with the anchor lube since uh, <laughs> Some people think that I over put too much on and What's funny is that my all of my good tap wrenches that I like to use um, This size here it won't open up enough for this to go in all right my next size up tap wrenches, which is uh, this size right here this uh, greenfield number six it won't swing. It'll hit the ways. But this El Cheapo one right here that I got will just open up enough for that tap. So that one worked out perfect. I'm just using my uh, spring-loaded center here. And hopefully that... Okay. There we go. I'm praying that this tap works. It was not a very expensive tap to buy. But I don't think you need this size tap very often, so. <clears throat> it is high speed steel, so that's good. It's not carbon steel. It seems to be cutting fine, just like a tap should. And maybe all that, all that uh, anchor lube will provide a nice finish in there. Man, wear me out. Let me try another little trick here. Well, I 
like it went in there very straight. You can see it rocking around. Okay. Now we'll come out with it and check it. looks good I gotta say again I'm not a I'm not a big fan of these imported tap wrenches but that's another reason why I like having a big collection of them because they all they're all useful in their own way and this one definitely helped me out <clears throat> it's really tight going in that thing that sucker worked though Go over and clean that off. Threads look good. Making the final pass now, one inch Okay, we'll take, we'll go ahead and cut uh, the zero side and the 180 side, and we'll mic it, see what we get. Shooting for 30 millimeter. I'll go ahead and see where I'm at. How close I am. Looks like 183. That's pretty dang close. I don't know. Alright, so it looks like I might need to take it like two thousandths because uh, I'm sure it's going to be a socket going there. That may not even matter. But I'm just going to go ahead and do it anyway. I don't know. I just moved it a thousandth. So I'm going to go ahead and redo the first two cuts. And um, remove another thousandth from each side. And then we'll, uh, we'll let it fly. Okay, we're going to go ahead and start indexing. I'm back on zero. That's my first cut. So you're going to go every 60 degrees. I'm using the super spacer. So it'll click in where I want it. We'll make a total of six cuts. I just got four more to go. Alright, that was uh, 660, so now we're going to go to 120 and then 180. So forth. All right, that should be our thirty mil hex. Looks pretty good. All right, so next thing I got to do uh, is go ahead and get some set screws drilled and tapped in here. We're just going to use some very small set screws, like maybe a number six screw. Got the first set screw hole in. Now I'm going to go 
over here to this side. So we're going to go 120 degrees. I'm going to do the same thing. So I'll go ahead and show you. Um, nothing spectacular here. I just dimple it with a center drill. And I'm tapping these for a 632. So I'm going to use my drill here. I'm, I'm going to use some anchor lube. Come on. All right. And then I'm using a uh, two flute spiral pointed tap. I'm going to go ahead and anchor a little bit up also. Drop it down in low gear. to do four more I got to step it down all right I blew it a little bit with a sharpie and I went ahead and scratched a few lines on there there's gonna be three of these plus the parting blade which is uh, 188 thousand stick so I just scratched the lines just to verify it and let's uh, let's look at it okay it looks like it's right between the lines. Okay, we've got all the set screws drilled and tapped, and I've already got it stepped off to our uh, first center distance there for the tool, and it should be about 465 thousandths every time. Make a, make a cut, step it over 465, and part another one off. Okay, so let's go ahead and give it a shot. Parting interruptions like this. One thing I'm going to do before I go all the way off with it, I'm going to take this out. And I've got my threading tool set up because what I do is I cut a 30 degree angle on each side just to where it cleans up to the, uh, it'll make like a full circle around it. I just cut a little bit. Sometimes you can see it it's right about there. Okay, so it's cleaned up all the way around now. And I should be able to bring this all the way back to my zero there. This is where digital readout really shines. I think we're good. Time to think now. I'm going to go ahead with it. I'm, I've got an insert that's right-handed that'll, that'll part off better. And I forgot about that till now. Okay. 
Yeah, I'm going to change that insert so it don't leave that edge on there. I'm going to have to do some cleaning up on that. Okay, two more. My parting tool should line right back up. I've got my indicator here. I faced two thousandths off of it. All right, it's touching on three thousandths. So. There's my proper amount for moving over. Where's my lines? Looks like I'm right on my lines. Okay. Just resetting my zero. chamfer on the other side. Looks good. Right back to zero. Too aggressive with it right there. It did fine. I was just trying to ease into the brake. I swapped out that insert for the right handed uh, lead in and it did a better job. It didn't hardly leave any on there. Just got to do a little bit of sanding on that. All right, one more to go. I'll just reverse or uh, copy what I did and we'll part one more off. All right guys, I got all the nuts finished up just for, except for a little bit of deburring. And I'm, I was using the uh, Noga multi burr right here. Right, let's see. All right, so this is the one that I'm completely finished with. And that one's done. You can see the little, the little whirly gig chamfering thing there. You can go in these set screw holes and 
Just do that. Puts a nice little chamfer right on the top corner there. Works great for that. get these deburred all right and this one here he only wanted three of them this one right here is actually a fourth and the only reason I did that was because it was just enough material machines for me to part off a fourth one now it doesn't have the set screws in it but it I kind of felt like why waste this I can uh, machine this Part it off, you know, only took me a couple minutes, and I can give this to him, and he can throw this in his toolbox, and he's got another spare. We can always go back later and drill and tap it for set screws if he wants to. The set screws in them was another safety precaution on his end that he thought that he would try because the factory nut, which is the, uh, nah, I left it over there on the lathe, but the factory nut, which is what I was copying, He's had, he has problems with them backing off and loosening it up, and it's destroying his crankshaft. And this is for uh, a Hoosaberg motorcycle. So I made one of these for him a long time ago. I don't know. It's been a few years back, probably at least five or six years. I made one of these nuts, and the, uh, the nut that I made for him worked fine. So, you know, this isn't case-hardened or anything like that, but... This is a strong piece of steel, and that's exactly what I made the last one out of. It was a nice piece of chrome molly, and it worked fine. So what he's going to do with the, with the set screws is he'll go in there, he's going to torque it, and he'll go in there with the, little, with the drill bit and dimple the threads inside the, uh, in the crank and then run the set screws down in there, and hopefully that will keep the nut from trying to back out. And he does use the Loctite also, he says. So he torques it down just like the factory spec says, and he still has problems with the nut backing off. And when it does, it causes carnage. So, um, all right, I used that right there. I'm gonna pull this one out. And the back side where I parted it off, it's got that sharp thread there. So I just been going around it lightly with the, with the uh, chamfering deburr tool here. And I'm just kind of taking my time and going around it and that's doing a nice job it's cutting a nice chamfer on that back side right there so I'm going to sit there and do that to these other three and then we'll about be done with these things so what I did is that little step right there where I part off I went over to my belt sander this would be the face that's going out you know it's not up against anything this is the face that uh, should be nice and true that's going to go up against the gear. So we'll go on that side there with the chamfer. So that'll be sticking out. So these are done. And they turned out nice. Nice finish. I mean, they look, they look decent. So the other thing that I had showed you before was these wear plates. I don't think I showed, a, showed them finished but I've got three of these wear plates. This is another part that uh, I've never, I don't think I've ever put on video, but that was one I made for him a long time ago in my old shop. That was the last spare that he had. So I made three more spares. And what was really cool is the bracket that this goes on, I made a couple for him out of some uh, formed aluminum a while back. And the, uh, the aluminum, it was, after a while it would fatigue and it would crack and break off. So he, uh, he's got a family member that's got a 3D printer and they actually did a 3D print of the part that this gets bolted to. So he's gonna try that out and see how the 3D printed part works. But this is just a wear plate that's gonna be down on the swing arm where the chain goes by. And what this does is that this keeps the chain from sagging into the tire because he races and I guess when he leans over the chain or something you know it's causing it to kind of get in right there next to the tire and rubbing so this keeps the chain away from the tire and that's all that is is just a wear plate so uh, got those done for him and we've got the uh, we've got the nuts pretty much finished up just got to do a little bit more deburring 
I will run the tap back through there to make sure the threads are cleaned out good and uh, they'll be done and he can come and come and get them so that's about it guys okay this is going to be a 3 8 depth of cut 3 quarter inch metal removal and I'm running 304 rpm 18,000 speed rate I did try a 20 but it tried to slow it down Metal remover, uh, 400,000 step to cut, 16,000 speed. 